This is Odin's Wolf Survival. I've been out in the cattails again, cutting and getting some stuff ready. Decided to make some cordage. This has been sitting out a day or two, so it's already pretty dry. It's not dry dry, but it's already set up to where it's workable. And you just separate out the leaves and you can see the fibers are already starting to pull loose. What you want is you can see the thin stuff right here at the edge. And this stuff right here will work. But the easiest way is to come back on this edge where you can see it's pretty translucent with the light. You can see my finger through it. That has very little of the bulk fiber in it, or the bulk material that's in the leaf that would make cordage shrink and do nasty stuff. This is somewhat dried out. You don't necessarily want it completely green. You can work it completely green if you're making traps immediately and stuff like that and it will work pretty well. Okay, what you do is you take this and you start, I'll roll it up. It depends on how big you want it. You can split this down to make uh, like a thread and this is a lot stronger than what you'd think. To start it, I roll it up. You start twisting opposite of each other. This is cattail, the fiber. You twist it up and it'll want to twist on itself. Now I twist it when you get it to that point, you want it twist into where you're going over. So you bring it over, your bottom leg is now your top. You twist it, bring it over, and I'm twisting clockwise. And then as you're looking down this way, you bring it the leg over counterclockwise. And you keep doing that and you'll get a nice tight cordage. This is the easiest way, most anybody can do it this way. There's other ways to do it to where you can make it faster and things along that line. And Cattail offers a nice long fiber that's easy to get that actually has some pretty good strength to it. You can use this for a fishing line, tying up water bottles, anything, anything that you use standard cordage for. Okay, now you get it down to where you need to add in. This is where you run the splice. You come through and you can get two pieces off of these generally. So you come down on the other side and you pop that off and you peel it down. Okay and this is where I'll come in, I'll run this down a little tighter. When you go to splice this in, I'll take the smallish end and run it down your long leg. Twist it up a little bit so it wants to stay in there. Bring it over to your short leg and this will become the new piece that you're going. Okay, twist that up, bring it over and as you finish making the cord, it works itself in, it gets bound together and the friction holds it in there. Besides, it's in both pieces now, so it don't want to come out. You can see my splice right here. And if you get it, sometimes they're thicker. If you get it to where it's actually working right and everything's kind of cool, your splice will be virtually the same size. It'll be virtually unnoticeable. It doesn't normally matter unless you're really anal about it. That's how you make cordage. And that short little bit was done relatively quickly. I can turn out about five feet a half an hour. If I'm kind of messing around, I can go faster. There's different methods. That doesn't sound like a lot of cord, but like if you're fishing, you're only using basically two feet of it. And you get a lot more, you get a lot more selective about your cordage uses and, and careful about how you're using it when you're actually making it by hand. But this is cattail cordage. And this is how it's done.